Over the last five decades, we have witnessed a wave of U.S. military interventions, a series of bombings, invasions, and long-term occupations. Undertaken, we have been told by one president after another, with the most noble of intentions, and paid for with the lives of young Americans and countless others around the world. What has occurred with one war after another is still with us. These dynamics are in play in terms of the U.S. occupation of Iraq, looking at other countries such as Iran, and the future will be replicated to the extent that we fail to understand what has been done with these wars in the past. The news media have generally bought into and promoted the notion that it's up to the president to make foreign policy decisions. This smart guy in the Oval Office has access to all the information. He knows more than we do. He's the commander in chief. The American people have no major role to play, and nor should they, because after all, they don't have the knowledge or capability to be responsive to the real situation. That was certainly true during the Vietnam War, as it was to be later, time after time, there were people in Congress who raised these issues, and they simply were marginalized by the news media, even though in retrospect, maybe especially because in retrospect, they had it right, and the conventional wisdom and the president were wrong. However difficult this vote may be, some of us must urge the use of restraint. Our country is in a state of mourning. Some of us must say, let's step back for a moment. Let's just pause just for a minute. And think through the implications of our actions today so that this does not spiral out of control. As we act, let us not become the evil that we deplore. Thank you, and I yield the balance of my time. Gentlewoman's time has expired. And this is a very common motif of history in the last several decades, where people who at the time were portrayed as loners, as mavericks, uh, as outside of the mainstream of wisdom, turned out to understand the historical moment. We got to back our president since when? Do we have to back our president, or should we, when the president is proposing an unconstitutional act? The best example is Wayne Morse, the senior senator from Oregon, who, beginning in 1964, was a voice in the congressional wilderness. Senator Morse was unusual in that he challenged the very prerogative of the U.S. government to go to war against Vietnam. He said, it's up to the American people to formulate foreign policy. Senator, the Constitution gives to the President of the United States the sole responsibility for the conduct of foreign policy. Couldn't be more wrong. You couldn't make a more unsound legal statement than the one you have just made. Yeah, this, this, this is the promulgation of an old fallacy that foreign policy belongs to the President of the United States. To whom does That's it belong nonsense. then, Senator? Belongs to the American people. All right, and our then constitutional how, how fathers can, made it very, very can, clear. Where does the President fit into what this I'm in saying the responsibility is, scale? What I'm saying is under our Constitution, all the President is is the administrator of the people's foreign policy. Those are his prerogatives. And I'm pleading that the American people be given the facts about foreign policy. You know, Senator, policy. that the American people cannot formulate Why and execute foreign policy. Why, you're a man of little faith in democracy if you make that kind no, of that is, I have complete faith in the ability of the American people to follow the facts if you'll give them. It isn't and my a charge faith, against my Senator. government is we're not giving the American people the facts. And that's the kind of faith in democracy that's not in fashion among the Washington press corps or the power elite in the nation's capital. But it's a good reading of the Constitution, and it's a good definition of democracy. Independent journalist I.F. Stone said that all governments lie, and nothing they say should be believed. Now, Stone wasn't conflating all governments, and he wasn't saying that governments lie all the time. But he was saying that we should never trust 
that something said by a government is automatically true, especially our own, because we have a responsibility to go beneath the surface, because the human costs of war, the consequences of militaristic policies, what Dr. King called the madness of militarism, they can't stand the light of day if most people understand the deceptions that lead to the slaughter and the human consequences of the carnage. If we get that into clear focus, we can change the course of events of this country, but it's not going to be easy, and it will require dedication to searching for truth. A time comes when silence is betrayal. That time has come for us, even when pressed by the demands of inner truth. Men do not easily assume the task of opposing their government's policy, especially in time of war. And I knew that I could never again raise my voice against the violence of the oppressed in the ghettos without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today, my own government. What do they think as we test out our latest weapons on them, just as the Germans tested out new medicine and new tortures in the concentration camps of Europe? Now that is little left to build on save bitterness. We are met by deep but understandable mistrust. To speak for them is to explain this lack of confidence in Western words, and especially their distrust of American intentions now. The world now demands a maturity of America that we may not be able to achieve. This way of settling differences is not just a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Somehow this madness must cease. We must stop now. I speak as one who loves America, to the leaders of our own nation. The great initiative in this war is ours. The initiative to stop it must be ours.